we have a huge show for you today. Tara Cox, Nick Vole, Amanda Richter, and Elena Buller will be joining us with the latest from across the district. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Jessica Moss. This episode is packed with news from across Vancouver Public Schools, but let's start with our top three. These are our favorite posts from social media. Our number three comes from Craig Stein Beverage. The local company and its employees collected more than 350 pounds of school supplies for students in Vancouver as part of the Right From The Start school supply campaign. Great job to all of those who helped support our kids this fall. Our number two comes from Carla Phelps. It was recently Coordinators Appreciation Week, a chance to say thank you to Family Resource Center coordinators across the district. At Hudson's Bay High School, students wrote thank you notes to coordinator Chelsea Unger. Thank you to all of the coordinators across the district who work every day to improve the lives of children. And our number one comes from Hauk Elementary, where Luna the therapy dog is back at work this fall, helping kids with a variety of behavioral issues. Luna, as you can see, has her own staff member badge and is an important part of the school community. Students who need to calm themselves or get a pick-me-up can spend time with Luna, who is trained to help kids. Let's begin with a revitalizing Vancouver update, the latest on school construction projects happening across the district. Construction continues at a number of school sites and we're also getting our first look at future school designs. Tara Cox joins us now. Tara, what are the architects sharing with us? Thanks. LSW Architects, the firm designing some of the district's new school buildings, has released animations that give us a great idea of what the new Vita Elementary and Fir Grove School campuses will look like. Let's start with Vita. It's the new elementary school located near downtown. Vita stands for Vancouver Innovation, Technology and Arts Elementary School. It will be built behind the current Fort Vancouver Regional Library Operations Center on Mill Plain Boulevard near Hudson's Bay High School. Vita is a four-story building and will house approximately 500 K-5 through students. It will have a grand staircase in the commons, a variety of closed and open learning spaces, an outdoor kindergarten play area, and a whole lot more. Construction is scheduled to begin in January with the anticipation that it will open in the fall of 2021. Let's move over now to Fir Grove School and VISTA program, which serves students with behavioral issues. The old building is almost 65 years old. The new building will be located on an entirely new site near the Gatehouse on 18th Street and Norris Road. The new building was designed for the school's unique student population with safety, community, and sensory needs factored in. It's a single-story building with a secure entrance, a gym, commons, and media center, in addition to classrooms. The Fir Grove construction will begin late this year or early next year and should be done by the end of 2020. The district hasn't announced yet a plan for what will happen to the old building. These are new buildings, obviously, but every school in the district is getting updates of some sort. Let's take a look now at what's happening at Franklin Elementary. Here are some new plans and concept drawings. The improvements at Franklin include new classroom wings with restrooms and staff meeting rooms. The wings will include five new classrooms and two other classrooms will be renovated. This project also includes roof improvements, more parking spaces, and an improved traffic safety plan. Construction should begin late this year and be finished a year from now. When it's done, all of the portables in use will go away. There's also an improvement plan at Sacagawea Elementary. It includes the construction of a new gym and detached covered play area, playground improvements, modernization of the West Wing with a new kitchen and commons, and a refinishing of the school's exterior. The plan is to begin work later this year or early next year. Of course, this project, like the others, was made possible by a bond measure passed by voters in 2017. Truman Elementary is also getting a new school building, and we'll have an update on that project in a future show. Back to you. 
Thanks, Tara. The project to replace King Elementary is well underway with the old building torn down and a new building under construction. In the meantime, King students are studying in the old Ogden Elementary building. We stopped by during the school's spirit assembly. Classes were recognized for their outstanding behavior, so basically it's business as usual, just in a new building. King students and staff are patiently waiting. We're still excited about what's coming, you know, but uh, the Peter S. Ogden building is very similar to um, our old site, and so it was a pretty easy transition. The kids know where to go, they know where to find all their classes, and so it's been uh, a really nice move. A temporary campus also means a temporary name. Students voted to rename the school King Cub University, a nod to the school's college readiness program. We really want to break the cycle of poverty and so with that we know that uh, attending college is a major way to do that and we know that all of our students may not choose to attend college but we want to make sure that they know that it's an option. Robinson Construction is building the new King Elementary and they're sending a photo every week showing the progress being made on the site. Those photos are lined up in the hallway for all of the students and staffs to see. During the demolition process at King, crews pulled up a pair of time capsules buried a long time ago. Nick Vole joins us now and Nick, what did they find? Thanks Jessica. One of those time capsules was compromised and its contents were destroyed, but the other was full of treasures from the 70s and 80s and a lot of memories. Steve Klinsky, Janelle Ephraim, and Deborah Hale are the last three principals from King Elementary, dating back to 1997. Now retired, Steve started his career as a student teacher at King. So I started there in 76, teaching. That was my first year. Five years later, in 81, King put together a time capsule. Inside, photos, student writing and drawing, newspaper clippings, and contents from the original time capsule buried in 1971, the year the school opened. Uh, then we buried it out by the flagpole, if I remember right. And uh, yeah, it was a big event. Had everybody out there, the parents, the kids, and uh, hard to believe that it's already been dug up again. <laughs> so it went pretty quick. Almost 40 years later, these three principals are taking a trip down memory lane. The Mount St. Helens eruption was in 1980 at the time, and just before it had the major eruption, I remember being out on the playground and we could see the little poofs of smoke going up from there, and uh, hard to believe it's already been that long since it happened. A lot has changed since 1981. Well, yeah, look at those pants. <laughs> the fashion in the 80s, uh, <laughs> it's, it reminds me of my childhood, really, because I was a child at that time. You know, some of those things are coming back, actually. Janelle has been principal at King for five years, and she noticed things that haven't changed. I was pretty impressed with the student writing. The voice was the same, you know, but having, but looking at uh, students and their penmanship and, and, um, and their pictures connected with it was pretty powerful for me. That's not the only thing at King that's remained the same over the years. I think the thing I enjoyed the most, besides working with the students, was this is the staff. It seems like King Elementary has always had a great staff of teachers that really work hard with kids. We have great families and, and, and students now and a great staff and um, from what I see in the time capsule it, it's just been that way for a long time. The time capsule and its contents will be available for current King students to see this year and there are plans down the road for it to be available to the public probably in the new King building when construction finishes next year. Back to you. Thanks, Nick. If you want to stay up to date with construction projects, it's easy to do on the district website. Check out vansd.org slash reschools for the latest news along with the timeline of future work. If you're on Twitter, you can also follow along at VPS underscore reschools. That account posts lots of great pictures. It's time for a We Learn update, a look at how technology is being used in the classroom. The new Ogden Elementary is open for business, and one of the school's many highlights is its makerspace. Joining us now to explain is Amanda Richter. And Amanda, what exactly is a makerspace? Thanks. A makerspace is where students go to get hands-on instruction and new strategies to solve problems. It's also where they go to have fun. Throughout the day at Ogden Elementary, teachers bring their classes to Rob Harsh's Makerspace. Makerspace is a place where kids can come and tinker and explore and really kind of figure out who they are as a hands-on learner. Today's challenge for these fifth graders, to build something with exactly five Legos, take it apart, 
and write instructions for someone else on how to make the exact same thing. It's a lesson in computational thinking. It allows the kids to see that if they follow a, a sequential pattern uh, or a series of steps, that they can figure out something that's a problem. In the makerspace, Mr. Harsh challenges students to rethink thinking. He asked um, if we think that our brains work like computers. I said no, he was like, actually, they do. And I was like, what? Like computers, our brains are constantly solving problems, whether we're aware of it or not. It's very weird to think of my brain as a computer. I always thought that it was like, that I would just think about something and then just do it, but apparently that's not what happens. It's just like a slower computer. Like a computer, sometimes the best way to get your brain working right is to shut it off and back on. For students, that means a trip to the makerspace. It gives your mind a reset and it really, yeah, it really helps. Here, students learn how to employ logic and creativity. I want kids to be able to come into the makerspace and look at a problem from a whole series of different angles. And that there isn't just one way to solve a problem. And that we also work best when we collaborate and we share those, those ideas of a, of a problem. The real results of the makerspace are seen in the classroom, where students use computational thinking to tackle math, science, and other academic problems. Encompass them around the standards and say, here's what you need to do but I want you to be able to do it in a way that shows me you're learning, but at the same time they're having fun because they're engaged in something that they're really passionate about. The concept of makerspaces may seem new, but really they've been around forever. When you were a kid, maybe it was shop class or home ec. The modern makerspace is broader in what happens inside, but the fundamentals are similar. Back to you. Thanks, Amanda. Now to a Columbia River student who is a big winner at video games not at playing them, but at designing them. Bridget, a junior, is one of five students from across the nation to be selected by Google Play for its Girls Make Games program. Her game, called Loon, is a science fiction game set on the moon. She first got into video games as a younger child with her Nintendo DS. I started playing these games, and at first they were more just fun, but then as I began to get into art, I began to, I guess, rediscover games, and I saw, like, what an incredible art form they could be combining with music and story and graphics and a truly immersive and interactive experience and I've been enjoying games since. Bridget also participates in the school's philosophy club and mock trial team and is in the international baccalaureate program. Her game Loon has a targeted release date of November 1st. If you like seeing stories about technology and education, check out the district's YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Just look for the We Learn playlist. If you care about the direction of Vancouver Public Schools, you have a chance to make a difference. The district is enlisting members of the community to update Design 2, its big picture strategic plan. It's the philosophy that shapes how the district does its work, and it's been continuously evolving since it began in 2008. If you're interested in participating in community symposia and workshops, email the district chief of staff, Tom Hagley. His email address is tom.hagley at vansd.org, or you can learn more on the district website, vansd.org. In the old days, a school's response to behavior issues often happened after an event, when a child would act out or bullying would occur. The modern approach is to prevent the behavior from happening in the first place. And at Hardy Elementary, it all starts with a hello. <laughs> Students at Harney Elementary School are happily chatting away at the lunch table. Nothing seems amiss, but many of these students don't actually know each other. We each got little stickers. Everyone got a different color. And each table was a different color so you got to meet new people. The exercise forced kids to get out of their friend groups. It's weird and fun at the same time because you don't know them very well, but it's also fun because you get to meet somebody new. Yeah, I talked with some people I didn't know. It went very well. I got to know a little bit about them. It's part of a special week-long event at Harney called Start With Hello, part of a program developed by the Sandy Hook Promise. And they're really wanting to make sure that, you know, kids aren't isolated, 
Um, when they are excluded, there can be all kinds of issues that, that kids can have. Um, and so we really want to be preventative. School counselors Angie Sharon and Peggy Hogan brought the idea to Harney. And really the program starts with just noticing that someone's left out and then deciding to go ahead and, and be the one to step up. Like the name says, it starts with a simple hello. Students are asked to invoke the golden rule. If you were alone, it would make you feel sad and lonely, and you want everybody to include you. Because Harney has a high Spanish-speaking population and a Spanish immersion program, some students are saying hola. Bien, se siente bien. Sen, son amigables y no me conocen. It makes me feel good and it makes me feel like other people are trying to spread joy. Simply knowing they belong can be a springboard for kids to find success in school and life. Kids that are feeling connected um, with other peers and with staff members, those are the kids that are going to be thriving. It does so much for a kid and it's amazing. The lunch activity was just one small part of the overall effort at Harney, and Ms. Sharon tells us it's not the end. They plan to reinforce all year long how important it is to include everyone at school. There are a lot of words that can be used to describe the focus of our next story. Hardworking, firecracker, jack of all trades, but none more so than soon to be missed. Joining us now with more is Elena Buller. Elena? Thanks, Jessica. Vancouver is a growing town, but it's still a small community. Everywhere you go, you see familiar faces, and Judy Amitwani has probably one of the most familiar. Hi. Seniors. One good-looking senior spree tonight. To say Judy Amitwani wears many hats, well, that would be an understatement. I am the kitchen manager at Skyview. I oversee Alki and iTech and I am a facility monitor, I am a game manager, I am a ticket taker, and I'm also the vice president of the SCIU 925 union. If you think you've seen her around at multiple events in multiple places, you'd be right. She's on location at almost every sporting event you can imagine, from setting up flags at football games to the bleachers and scoreboards at volleyball games and basketball games, and then she's taking tickets at everything in between. So four dollars, hon. Her average day, not so average. It starts in the kitchen at Skyview. My average day starts about 4.45. I get to work and I'm there till about 1.45. And then on certain nights, I start at two o'clock getting ready for a game or three o'clock, I get ready for a game. And I don't get home till 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. Judy's a self-proclaimed workaholic, but it's work she says she loves. And you can feel the love when Judy talks about her coworkers. When my husband passed away, they all heard about it. They all, you know, came and said, how are you doing? Do you need anything? We're family. We've been family for years watching kids grow up. And the feeling is mutual. OK, you're good to go. <laughs> Thanks. It, she just makes the, it's like, it's not, I'm not even working, you know? It's, we're just like hanging out. She has a great personality. She's a hard worker. And uh, she's always there if you need someone to help you out. She takes her work very seriously. No one gets past her ticket booth without some type of contribution. Hello. Chain gang? Chain gang? crew? Yeah, how do I know that? I don't see your chains. Name, uh, I'm, I'm Keith Miller. <laughs> I got you, thanks. Because Judy says it's all for the kids, and that's who she'll miss the most. Judy is retiring as game manager next year. I've enjoyed it. It's provided what I needed, but I think it's time to move on. But don't worry, that's the only hat she's hanging up here at VPS. She'll still be taking your tickets. Hi, Hi two. Keeping an eye on the gates and saying hello at many games to come. There you go. Thank you. It's family, and I'm just so proud. Just so proud to be a Vancouver School District employee. Working at the district has really been a family affair for Judy. Her husband worked here as well as two of her children. And it's no wonder she's so proud to report to work each and every day. Back to you, Jessica. Thanks, Elena. A great event is coming up for students who are trying to figure out what happens next after they graduate. It's called Future You, and it's happening in late October at Hudson's Bay High School. It's open to all VPS students, and it's free. 
Joining me now to talk about it is Nina Stem, who organizes the event. Nina, thank you so much for being here. First off, what will be available to students at Future U event? Uh, a variety of post-secondary options. So post-secondary is what our students are going to do after high school. Um, and it includes four-year colleges and universities, two-year colleges, um, tech and trade schools, local employers, and uh, local community and social service resources for our families. Why is it important for kids to be thinking about this now? Mm -hmm. So if our students wait until their junior or senior year to explore these options, um, they're actually coming in a little bit late to the game. There's a lot that happens junior, senior year for students in terms of tasks that they have to complete in order to get to the, um, the end road of actually going to a college or a university or a training program of some sort. Um, and so it's really important for our students to start exploring those options as early as they possibly can. Um, it's also statistics actually show that students who start exploring post-secondary options um, as soon as middle school, even back into elementary school, are far more likely to actually attend post-secondary education than students who wait until their junior or senior year. So that's one of the reasons that we open it up to our entire K through 12 student population um, so that even our kindergartners can come check it out if they want to and get excited about something. You've pointed out some of the good rationale and the outcomes from a program like this, but why does the district do this, do this event? Mm -hmm. um, it is, there are college fairs in the area, there's a national college fair in Portland every year and a, a fine arts college fair in Portland every year. But for the most part, there aren't very many um, opportunities for students to view a lot of different post-secondary options in one place. So even like that National College Fair, it is very, um, very much focused on four-year colleges and universities. So um, we value our students' choices um, after high school, no matter what they are. So if our students choose to go into a tech or trade school, some alternative training program, an apprenticeship, the military, um, straight into the workforce with some training, whatever that may be, we want to value that and respect that choice for all of our students. So offering something that allows students the opportunity to pursue some of those other alternative forms of post-secondary education is really important. Have we seen big success with this in the past? Uh, so this is our, this will be our fourth year, and uh, and every year we have about 600 people attend, uh, and I I hope that this year will be even better. Well, look forward to checking back in with you after it happens. Thank you so much for joining us. Today. Thank you for having me. Again, the Future U event is right around the corner. It's on October 24th at 5:30 p.m. at Hudson's Bay High School. If you can, try to get there at the beginning so you can attend an informational session and meet all of the groups presenting information. It's time for the big picture, our favorite image from social media. And this time it comes from Eisenhower Elementary School where they're showing a ton of school spirit. Check out that I heart Eisenhower necklace with beads that match the school t-shirt. The hashtag says, be super team Ike. And from the looks of it, they're doing just that at Eisenhower. Now let's see what's happening in Vancouver Public Schools. And this is a biggie. On October 16th, 17th, and 18th, there are early releases and closures for parent-teacher conferences. Wednesday the 16th, every school is released two hours early. On Thursday the 17th, elementary schools are closed and middle and high schools get out two hours early. And on Friday the 18th, every school is closed. Make sure you attend the conferences and plan for childcare. And we're just about out of time. Thank you so much for watching. For Tara Cox, Amanda Richter, Nick Vull, and Elena Buller, I'm Jessica Moss. We'll see you next time inside Vancouver Public Schools.